All right, Steeler fans, welcome back to the second half of this podcast. For those of you that are watching this segment on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. We do appreciate it. And anyone out there that's like, how in the hell do I get my question answered by Jeff on this Wednesday show? It's easy. All you have to do on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, at jhartman underscore P-I-T on Twitter, you, I, I, every Tuesday, I think I did it at nine o'clock, nine thirty this uh, on Tuesday morning. You just ask the, I, I put out the tweet. Hey, ask away. You all ask away, and I answer it live. That's all you got to do. You don't have to follow me. Just have to find me. All right, so let's start this off. I told you Jeff Coons would be chiming in, and he is our buddy from up north. He's a Jeff. I may spell my name wrong. Blame my parents. I will. But for once, I was right that a punter would be the first position addressed in free agency. Russell Wilson was <laughs> Russell Wilson was released, so technically outside of legal tampering. Weasel Boy just fired his agent. Hashtag flip the field. You are right. You did predict the first position to be a punter. I can't believe you got that right. All right, Jay Allen said, Patrick Queen is the best dealer's off-ball linebacker since. Man, um... Shoot, do you have to go? Do you have to go back to Shazier? But I know they're not. They're not the same. They're not the same. No, Ryan Shazier was kind of a unicorn with his athleticism, his speed. You might have to go back to that though. It's been that long. It's been a wild ride. Let's hope they found a solution. Ethan McNew, all right, Jeff read a report that Steelers can create a lot more cap space to spend up to the cap with restructuring some contracts and a cam extension. Are the Steelers pushing all their chips in the middle of the table to make a big run this upcoming season? And then he says in a follow-up, I came back post Johnson trade. Who are the top candidates to replace him? Well, I think Calvin Ridley, obviously, that's what I said. The Steelers are interested. Doesn't mean they're going to get a deal done, but they're interested. Um, do you bring back an Allen Robinson on a cheaper deal? I don't think that answers the question. Could they? They're definitely probably going to draft a wide receiver. It's just a matter of which one. But we'll see. I mean, this is interesting. But yeah, the Cam extension is going to free up some space. Dave Schofield brought this up on our breaking news podcast yesterday that they actually could restructure Alex Highsmith's contract to create space. They have options. Let's go to Anton Char. Just saw the news. Hadn't heard from you yet, so just wanted a question to confirm. We get your thoughts on this tomorrow. Patrick Queen signing is pretty awesome, right? He's 24. Clearly on the up. Should be a great free ag agent acquisition. I love his age. He is a young guy. He's coming off his first rookie. It's his first big-time contract. That means something to these guys. It really does. And when you're a free agent, you kind of, you get to choose. People have asked me before, why do players team to tend to cling to their college more than they do their NFL? Meaning they like always are that team. So Cam Hayward's always an Ohio State Buckeye. Because he chose Ohio State. I mean, think about that. I'm sure Cam Hayward got offers from Michigan and maybe even some other big name schools around the country, Michigan State, where his brother Connor went. But no. In free agency, because in the draft, you are selected. You are drafted at by that team. But in free agency, you got to kind of get to choose. And he's choosing the Steelers here. So I think he's going to be from for a big year. Let's go. Leeboy, the one, said, what is Omar cooking up today? Well, today he cooked up a lot of stuff. A Deontay Johnson trade, uh, an inside linebacker signing, and I think he's just getting started, folks. Let's go to Tank. He has several questions. With the addition of Queen, who will benefit more, TJ, Cam, Alex, or the defensive backs? I actually think that with the addition of Queen up the middle, Dave, again, Dave Scofield, if you missed the breaking news podcast, go back and listen. His stats, he actually has a decent number of sacks for an inside linebacker. Uh, so I actually think that the, it's going to really benefit the back half. Him being able to stop the run, uh, not requiring Minka Fitzpatrick to stay in the box in certain settings, or to, for them to have a box safety all the time, I think that's who it benefits. Tank also asked with the new OC, does Calvin Austin the third still have a job or will returns be given to a rookie? I'm not sure. Calvin Austin the third might have an increased role with Deontay Johnson now out of the out of the fray. So we'll see. We'll see what they do there. They're going to be bringing in some receivers, no doubt about it. Next from Tank, free agency win so far for the Steelers or other AFC North teams. I, I think that I think the Steelers have done a good job. And they're not done. They're not done. And I, I told you all this last week they're going to be patient still they're not going to go out and they're not going to rush to make moves and they're going to play their cards correctly and they're going to play the cards the way they want to play them Steeler fans don't like the way they play their cards but that's just what they do i i think they've made moves that are very uh equivalent equal to the rest of the division let's go to tank again if dj 18 is really on the move he is 
who would pair best with him and his talent of 14. Again, if you give me just the name that I'm hearing, Calvin Ridley, he's a good route runner. He's very fast. He's very elusive. He's experienced. Um, I think he would pair well with someone like that. And then you have a lot of options in the upcoming draft. Now, Anton Char gave another one. He said, an actual question I've been meaning to ask, do you think the reason screens don't work, didn't work, remember how slow they looked, was Kenny Pickett's arm strength? The screens work better with Rudolph, and I wonder if Kenny Pickett just can't. Seems like it's a similar issue with Mason Rudolph's deep ball being better. I know that Kenny Pickett doesn't have the strongest arm, but I don't think you need a strong arm to have a successful screen pass. A lot of times, it's just a matter of lofting it over the defensive linemen that are rushing. Also, the play has to be set up properly. So when I tweet out in a game, the Steelers are the worst screen team I've ever seen in my life, a lot of times it has to do with the blocking in front of the thrower and the person that's going to catch the ball. The running back has to sell it properly. The offensive line has to sell it properly. And they have to block accordingly. And if a quarterback is looking beyond that first level, the pass rusher is coming at him, he might see that the play is busted. And if the play is busted, I'm going to throw it at their feet or I'm going to throw it away because I don't want a negative play. And that's a smart play. So, well, I don't think it was arm strength. I really don't. It just probably all the other minutia that goes into a successful screen play. Let's go to Joshua Petrick. He said, to be honest, I really like the Wilson signing. It's extremely low risk. And if there's any hope for Kenny, it will be nice for him to have a guy like Russ in the room. But beyond that, I think he definitely gives us our best shot to win right now. Like I said, whoever wins this competition is going to give the Steelers the best chance for them to win. doesn't mean they're going to be guaranteed to win anything, but it's going to give them the best chance to win. So I actually like I like the signing too. I really do. Low risk, the way you put it, agree 100%. Brian Haynes says, pretty sure I missed the show. You didn't. But after day two of the tampering period, not even the free agency part technically, in your opinion, is there anything to complain about so far? As always, thanks for the show. Hashtag Ryder Dykery. Thank you, Brian. Hope you're doing well. And I, I got to be honest, I don't think I don't have anything to complain about. There are people out there to complaining. Oh, they need to do this. They need to do that. It has been 48 hours. That's it. Come on, people. Like th th there's negotiations that are ongoing. I anyone that's like, oh, I expected them to have five players lined up already. Like that, that doesn't work that way. Maybe this is your first time watching it, the following along in the NFL in the offseason. And if that's the case, it doesn't work that way. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. All right, let's go to David Briggs. Hey, Jeff, how do I explain to people that my future baby boy was in... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading ahead. I'm laughing. Let me start over. How do I explain to people that my future baby boy, who is due in late May, wasn't named after Russell Wilson? We came up with the name Russell in November when he was still the starter in Denver. My, my wife has always told me that naming our kids after Steelers players are off the table, but here we are. Hashtag let's ride. Hashtag baby unlimited. <laughs> that is fantastic. Congratulations also on the baby boy uh, that is due in late May. That's exciting. As a father of five, I always get excited when the ride or die crew starts to expand. And uh, I kind of view it kind of like my own tree and coaching trees, you know, like, oh, my fan base is growing because they just had a baby. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. Congratulations. Russ, maybe he'll become a mainstay in Pittsburgh, and maybe he'll be a one-year wonder, and no one will remember it. Let's go to Nathan Vance. Like, hey, Jeff, just want to get your opinions on the free agency moves we've seen Omar Khan and the Steelers make so far. I can't complain. I can't complain. Patrick Queen's a big name. People like names. They like to know what's going on. Russell Wilson, same thing, low risk. Uh, I like the contracts for everyone, including the punter. Can't complain. We'll see what, what comes up. John Pennington, Jeff, do you think the Steelers should draft Jordan Travis quarterback to get in front of next season in case Wilson is done after next year? I think they should draft a quarterback every year until they find their franchise quarterback. Well, it's not always feasible because every quarterback class is different, but uh, this is a good one. So will they take one? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of team needs that need checked off before I go that far. So let's get through free agency first. Let's go to Lumbar Zach, Lumber Zach 94 Lumbar. Uh, he's at Oklahoma Jeff. I like that. That's got a good ring to it. Oklahoma Joe's, if you're watching or listening, you probably aren't. That's okay. Still going to give you plugs and some props because I do love your grills. Uh, happy opening of free agency. So big money. Who would you be willing to spend on in free agency? I'm looking at guys like Eric Armstead, and I got to say, I'd drop Larry in a second. If we had a shot at him also all in on trading for Snead and locking up our cornerback room, either, or 
I think Snead is just going to cost too much. The, the, the trade that they made at, well after you submitted this question is probably going to be maybe the move they make in free agency at cornerback. Uh, they might make another move. I just don't expect it to be a big name. We'll see. I just, I, maybe they'll pull off a Snead trade, but when they franchise tagged him, I felt like that was, it was just going to be too costly. It was just going to be too, the, the franchise tag at cornerback is almost $20 million. So they'd have to pick that up. Keep that in mind. Okay. Joshua Patrick, again, all the middle linebackers that are left, who would you, who would your pick be? And he then says, uh, this is a mute point now because they signed Patrick Queen. Uh, but yeah, there's some, there were some out there. We'll say, we'll put it that way. All right, let's go to the uh, another question. I lost my place. Let me find it. Here we go. Will Caldwell. Hey Jeff, have you seen? Have you sent Wilson a cease and desist on Let's Ride when he's legally forced to change his slogan? What does it change to? So uh, I knew that Russell Wilson was doing the Broncos country. Let's ride. Let's ride. All that. I knew he was doing that. I've I've been calling my podcast Let's Ride since 2020. So I've been doing the let's ride stuff before he started doing it. I don't think he did it in Seattle. This was like Broncos thing. So I, I'm going to say that I've been the let's ride podcast much longer. I will say that now that he's a Steeler, maybe he'll do something else. I don't know. I really hope he doesn't. Like, can I just have this? Like, I don't have much. Let me just have this one thing. Like Russ, give me one thing. Now, if you want to come on the podcast, you can talk about let's ride all you want. You want to have a regular weekly spot with me, Russ? Ah, uh, let's do it. Let's ride, baby. Let's ride. I'd love it. All right, Andy Cooper. Hey, Jeff, do you think that Kenny Pickett will be will still be on the Steelers roster come week one of the regular season? If not, where do you think he'll end up? I do think he will be on the roster in week one. I don't think they're going to get rid of him at, in any way, shape, or form. Matthew McMichael. Hey, Jeff, longtime listener from way back to the standard is the standard. But do you think the Steelers sat on their laurels and waited too long in the center market? What do you think of the guys left? Or do you think they're enamored with one of the draft guys? Again, they are typically this. They're setting this up the way that they do. Typically, in my opinion, they're going to get a second tier guy in free agency. And they're going to say that if we had to go with him in the regular season, we could. Or if we draft a guy, he can at least be a stopgap until this guy's ready. And then they're going to draft a, a center higher. Uh, I don't know if it'll be in round one with like Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier. I don't know. But I think this is the part of their plan. This is part of their plan. Let's see how it plays out. Thomas asks, what is the plan after this one-year deal with Russ? Go back to Kenny, pay Russ $30 million, start all over. I wish I knew. I That's the million-dollar question, in my opinion. And I think that the Steelers right now are thinking solely about 2024. That's all they're focused on. Get this roster better this year. And so if Russell Wilson plays out of his mind and he earns a $30 million a year contract and it's in Pittsburgh, then so be it. If he doesn't and he goes elsewhere, they'll have options as well. So keep all this in mind. Let's just focus on 2024. We'll deal with 2025 when it gets here. James says, Jeff, Jeff, just admit it. You're the source for SCN. Your podcast is named Let's Ride. And guess what? Mr. Let's Ride himself is now a stealer. Can't believe I've been duped this whole time. Sucker. <laughs> Let's go. I'm just joking. Steelers fan 69 who always provides the comic relief. Here's what he says. How does, how did Moses make his coffee? He brews it. <laughs> what did the sushi say to the bee? What's up, bee? If my wife says, I am the cheapest guy in the world, I'm not buying it. Last one, people who drive an electric car, do they listen to ACDC or something more current? Ah, uh, but I'm Ching. Very nice. Steeler Fan69 is getting some love here in the comments, too. Got 11 likes. Good for you, man. He also says, Can I get an offseason DEF CON level? We will do a post free agency DEF CON level prior to the draft. We'll do one again after the draft, and then we won't hit on that again until close to training camp. So that's on the docket, just not right away. Next go blue steel with a Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett. Now in the quarterback room, I have to imagine the Steelers draft a quarterback late to fill out the space. I could see a dude like Spencer Rattler, maybe in the fourth or a guy like Devin Leary from Kentucky in the sixth or seventh. What say you, I don't know much about these prospects. I'm just trying to see what they do in free agency. First, I do think they draft a quarterback. I just don't know who, and I don't know when Joshua Petrick said, what position do you hope we sign next in free agency? I'd like a receiver. I would like a receiver. James also asked, considering there's still confusion, confusing 
considering the steel, the still confusing quarterback situation, has this altered your rebuilding timeline at all? Personally, I feel Pittsburgh is still more than just a quarterback away from taking the next step, but I hope they prove us all wrong. In my opinion, when you bring in a Russell Wilson, I don't think you are in a rebuild mode. You are in a win now mode. So this changes everything. This changes the rebuild from two to three years. This is a, we are now in win now. We're trying to win in 2024, whether it's with Kenny Pickett or Russell Wilson, that's the mode they're in now. It changes everything. The rebuild is still happening from a roster perspective, but that quarterback position is the biggest question mark. Zach Farnsworth, hey Jeff, do you still think there's a legitimate competition for the quarterback one this season? I don't see how Kenny Pickett would earn it over Russ unless he has drastic improvement. Also, I'd say that Kenny Pickett doesn't see the Russ signing as a vote of confidence. So, Zach, that's fair. We were told every step along the way, go all the way back to when the season ended. And we they, they said, hey, they're going to be looking at a veteran option. Okay, the source says they're going to be looking at a veteran option, but they're not giving up on Kenny. Then we get another news source, they're not giving up on Kenny. Source talks again, but they're not giving up on Kenny. I don't know how many times I have to say it. They're not giving up on Kenny. And when I say they're not giving up on Kenny, they're going to give him every opportunity to win the job. And if he doesn't, it's on him. It's not going to be because he wasn't given the opportunity like Mason Rudolph way back in 2019. And then even in the years following tender cat asked too, are the rumors true that the team, that teams are interested in picket. If so, I'd put him on a jet, get the highest draft pick while you can. Also, how many teams do you think Kenny would be quarterback one? I have a feeling the Steelers are the only team that would put him in that role. And then he follows that up with, if you're Kenny Pickett, is your confidence gone? If Kenny wins the quarterback battle to the Steelers, do you think the Steelers are trying to foil the fan base to think it was actually a battle? So let's go back to the first one. I don't, I have not heard any rumors about Pickett being traded. So haven't heard any of that at all. How many teams would be a quarterback one on? Probably not many, not many, put it that way. And then if I'm Kenny Pickett, is my confidence gone? If my confidence is gone, I don't have much confidence in myself anyways. If I'm a confident human being, I don't care if they bring in Tom Brady. I only care about how I perform. And Tom Brady in his prime, by the way. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to play the best of my ability. I trust my skills. I trust my ability. And I'm going to trust that it's going to win the job. If Kenny Pickett is doubting himself now, then cut him now. That's all you got to do. Cut him. Cut him now. All right, now we have a question. This is from, oh my gosh, he Ed Cunningham. He said, Jeff, great show yesterday, and congrats on predicting the Russell Wilson signing. Thank you. He then provided a picture image of two questions. Here we go. Is it possible that, this is a lot. Is it possible the Steelers are too often forcing offensive linemen to play at positions other than the one they were trained to play? And that there's a cost that comes with doing that. Kevin Dotson was a guard, not a left guard. Rams figured that out, and he had the best season of his career. Congrats to him on his new three-year contract with the Rams, but we need to acknowledge that the Steelers kind of blew it with him. Now we have Roderick Jones, who is a left tackle, not a right tackle. I get that the Steelers think O-linemen should be versatile, but the reality of that theory is you're literally not putting players in the best position to succeed. And consequently, you're creating disgruntled players. I mean, shoot, they even had TJ Watt playing the wrong side till Debo said something to coaches. Why do they continue to make this mistake of forcing round pegs into square holes again and again? Maybe it is a little bit of hubris from the coaching staff. The feeling of we can coach them up into whatever we want to make them. We want to make them a right tackle. He can be a right tackle. But I agree with you. That's not always the best fit. Now, Omar Khan did come out and say, Look, Roger Jones is going to be our left tackle. Eventually, he's going to be a left tackle. But until they draft a guy or pick up a veteran that they feel is better than Dan Moore, goodness gracious, I hope it's this offseason, he's probably going to stay on the right side. I hate to tell you that. Number two, why isn't it a bigger story that the Broncos bench Russell Wilson for not giving up his quote-unquote injury guarantee? Why isn't the NFLPA raising hell about it? I'm referring to the story he told on Brandon Marshall's podcast. What the hell? That was extortion. Even the NFL said, uh, you can't do that. Yeah, so that was a story. Good point, by the way. That was a story, Ed, that just kind of got brushed under the rug. I was shocked that no one else really ran with it, but you're right. And that, that, that to me tells me that this was a really, really, really 
ugly situation in Denver. It was not, it was not conducive to success at all. People can call Sean Payton the quarterback whisperer all they want. That's fine. I completely disagree. You had a messed up, a completely messed up situation for Russell Wilson from the moment he stepped in, and Nathaniel Hackett the year before wasn't any better. So you know what? Bring Russell Wilson in. If there's a coach in the NFL that I think can get players focused and help them kind of reconnect and resurrect their career, it's Mike Tomlin. I trust him. All right, really good. Really good. Love it. I absolutely love this show. I had a lot of fun. Love the questions. Thank you all very much. I will be back on Friday. I'm sure we'll have more news to break down. Jeremy Jerome Betts will be joining me for the All Bets Are Off segment. In the meantime, we'll have everything for you at SteelCurtainNetwork.com. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out wherever you get your podcast by searching Steelers or Steel Curtain Network. And man, it's going to be exciting. There's more signings to come, folks. Be patient. Here we go. You know, we finish these out. Be safe, be kind, and God bless. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you on Friday. Go Steelers.